this is a work in process for a um, client garden. My name is Darcy Daniels. I am founder of eGarden Go and a garden designer in and around the Portland area. So we have a existing tree here, a magnolia, and a new, newly built patio. This was constructed by Pete Wilson Stoneworks. You can see the craftsmanship is top notch, absolutely beautiful. And so I've been charged with uh, uh, revamping the plantings on the back side. So I'm going to walk you through what we've done. So this is uh, newly planted, not complete, but the foundation is really um, uh, is really getting established. So let's go in and take a closer look. So this far back corner, oh, the conditions are uh, pretty moist soil and uh, quite wet in winter. So that's gonna be a concern. Um, and this spot that I'm showing you right now does get a blast of afternoon sun, but generally it's pretty shady, uh, kind of open shade. Back there, it's gonna be quite shady. And then on the far corner here, again, it's gonna get some hot afternoon sun. So let's go back over here and take a look. So I've got a mix of, you know, evergreen structure plants and plants that are gonna kind of provide the bulk. And then down here, we still have room for uh, the details and the fun things that we'll use for edging the garden. So I've got an abelia kaleidoscope. That's a evergreen, uh, shrub predominantly yellow tones but its new growth takes on some bronzy hints i've got a little conifer here this one's called gold fern so it's chemicipris obtusa gold fern and then a classic uh, uh, cottage garden flowering shrub that's a viburnum um, a snowball viburnum so that's viburnum opulus sterile and back there, just uh, evergreen shrub with uh, finely textured foliage and fragrant, but nondescript um, uh, white blooms. That's Osmanthus burkwoodii. So it's gonna grow slowly, but fill that whole space. This guy is gonna fill that whole corner. Uh, for summertime fragrance, we've got a uh, Daphne summer ice. And I've got some ferns and uh, uh, ferns in there, a ground covering fern, um, a moisture loving perennial with excellent foliage. This is Philopendula, um, and I'm gonna blank out on the name, but it's a Philopendula, which is a moisture loving perennial and it will get plumes of kind of fluffy pink blooms. I don't plant this plant very often, but I think it's got gorgeous foliage um, and I'm hoping that it does well here. Um, it's got go gorgeous foliage with kind of bronzy uh, new foliage tints. Uh, wants to be about four feet tall and kind of have a relaxed and uh, not weeping, but a little droopy uh, habit. This is a uh, very special uh, rhododendron. It's called um, Sir Charles Lemon. Don't find them very often, but um, it's got fantastic foliage, a little bit of a uh, indumentum, so that will help it um, uh, resist the lace bug. And then it's got, uh, I think they're uh, soft, uh, very, very soft yellow or white blooms that are actually very pretty. Some more ground covering and some ferns. And then we go to the old uh, standby for shade. That's a Fatsia japonica. Uh, trade name is Camouflage. And it's uh, got a different cultivar name, but uh, Fatsia Camouflage is easiest way to find that one. We've got ferns, we've got a red jersey, which is gonna really appreciate the uh, wet soil some Lanicera that we transplanted from elsewhere to just be an evergreen backdrop. So those are just uh, Lanicera nidida, um, oh crap, um, the one with red tip, red tip. And then this one was, uh, this was here. So 
uh, we decided to keep it. It's a contorted uh, uh, winter hazel, so a Corlopsis. I've got a Hydrangea praseosa in there, which will, uh, it's a serrata type, so it's gonna want the afternoon shade, which this has, and that really even moisture, so that'll be good. And a still be um, called uh, Chocolate Shogun, and we've got three of these. Those are the Wygelia My Monet, and a Hardy Fuchsia, and this seed, and one of my favorite ferns again. So ferns and Blatilla. This one, see that? That's got a little straggly flower. So that should also appreciate uh, the consistent moisture here. Um, we've got a little mock orange here that is new to me. It's uh, dwarf and kind of columnar in shape. And, oops, I guess I'm not showing you the right one. So it's called Illuminati Tower. So it's just like the mock orange. So it's got the fragrance, uh, fragrant white blooms, but its growth habit is uh, supposed to be uh, kind of upright and dwarf. Uh, this is a columnar um, crab apple. I got this from Treeforia. Thanks, guys. It's a raspberry spear crab apple, and it's going to be columnar. Uh, it's got the early season blooms that are very deep magenta pink, and then its foliage has a certain darkness. Got another abelia, which will kind of speak to the, the one that we started at over here. Oops, can't see it there. <laughs> there it is. Um, so we've got a second abelia. And let's see, we've got a, um, this is an umbrella pine and the cultivar is uh, Joe Cozy. So it is selected for its strong upright habit and its fantastic foliage. We've got a hydrangea. This one's called uh, Quickfire. It's one of my favorites. A little Simisifuga, which I know it has a different name now, but I, that's the name I know it by. Maybe it's Actea. Um, and then we've got a little columnar golden uh, foliage. This is called Forever Goldie. It's going to be narrow, sun tolerant, and kind of help cover that fence. Now I mentioned that this tree was a magnolia. So magnolias have uh, surface roots and you know you don't want to do too much digging around if you can help it. Um, so what I did this time is I did the Hakona Lakoa. I was able to find the uh, variety that's called Albo striata, which I really like. It's not quite as insistent in its yellow color, but it's that Japanese forest grass, grass with a light variegation. It's a deciduous grass. And when it uh, gets established, it's gonna just really kind of move with the slightest breeze and just really kind of be uh, very graceful underneath this tree. It also, you know, once it gets established, it's gonna cohabit with those uh, roots very easily. And what we'll do is we will add to its interest by doing some early season bulbs like um, uh, the uh, spring blooming anemone, anemone uh, blanda, uh, little dwarf, uh, daffodils, which actually that is what that is. I was able to pick up some that had already, uh, you know, at a, for a really good price from the nursery. And so I put those in, I think those are um, Narcissus sailboat. And to mark this corner, I've got a little conifer and I have left room for something special right there. My thinking is, um, you know, and it's worthy as a possibility or a Corylopsis passiflora. So details still to come and obviously it needs to be uh, mulched and all of that. Uh, but I feel like we're making really good progress on this uh, corner and I'm super excited about it. And I hope you enjoyed the process shot. And of course I will uh, let you uh, do some more photos when we're cleaned up and we're mulched and you can really start seeing what's going to be happening here. So 
Uh, but I know that people really like to see the, uh, the, the gardens kind of in process and really get a sense of what that, um, what that is like and what some of the choices are. So I hope this was of interest and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.